Hello and welcome to the next webinar here at the Global Square, where we will talk about the current situation for the Russian civil society, organized by Öskrupen. During the next 30 minutes, we will focus mainly on the laws on foreign agents and undesirable organizations, which are the main two laws restricting freedom of association in Russia. As it said in the invitation, during this past year we have seen a quite dramatic deterioration for human rights in Russia. It's going fast and it's happening to an extent that we haven't really seen before. And as part of this escalated repression through various means, we've also seen an increased use of said laws. And there's also been introduced uh, some unpleasant amendments to them that uh, may result in some serious consequences for the civil society in Russia, which already has been under severe pressure for a long time. And with us today uh, to give us some insights into the latest developments in this sphere, we have Pavel Chikov, founder of Agora, which is the network of human rights lawyers across Russia defending human rights and it's one of the most uh, prominent human rights organizations in the country. Considering uh, the topic of today, uh, we could also mention that Agora was once labeled a foreign agent themselves, already in 2014, I believe. And they're often liquidated by court. Uh, but it has continued to work as a network, and uh, its lawyers have also been defending several uh, the so of the so-called foreign agents and undesirables in court through the years and continues to do so today. Uh, we are very happy to have you with us today, Pavel. And uh, I will start by giving the floor to you. If you could please start by describing these laws and how they are being used in Russia. Uh, thank you, Maria. Um, <coughs> Well, the idea that um, uh, non-governmental organizations in Russia are getting foreign funds uh, 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 in order to influence uh, domestic politics uh, was announced uh, first time by Vladimir Putin, the president, uh, in uh, 2003. In 2004, uh, he... Uh, said that uh, in his message to the Russian parliament, um, and only uh, and only eight years after, in 2012, uh, with new uh, parliament controlled by the Kremlin, uh, this law, the law on foreign agents, uh, has been adopted. And it was uh, a response uh, that the Russian government made uh, to uh, uh, the, uh, the so-called uh, Magnitsky Act, uh, the act that was adopted to, uh, by the United States um, as uh, a uh, result uh, of um, massive uh, abuse, human rights abuses in Russia, uh, and it, uh, in, uh, it included a sanctions list the list of uh, people and legal entities, companies, Russian companies that uh, that cannot operate uh, uh, and trade with uh, the United States, uh, any uh, citizens or any companies, etc. So this is uh, this should be seen on one side as a diplomatic war between uh, Russia and uh, the Western countries. Then the European uh, Union and uh, several European countries also adopted uh, uh, Magnitsky Acts or, or similar laws uh, 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 on the international level. Uh, and the idea uh, to uh, focus and to attack uh, on various Russian um, uh, groups um, in response of of this uh, developed in Russia. So first, uh, on the first stage, uh, it, uh, there were 
human rights activists, human rights NGOs, and environmental NGOs uh, that have been targeted by this law in um, in 2013, 14, 15, and we also were among those. Um, then uh, some of the organizations decided to stop their activities, uh, and others uh, decided to uh, quit getting any foreign funds. Others decided not to use any legal entities uh, and proceed and uh, continue their work as uh, informal networks. Uh, and this was uh, the way that we um, uh, we used. Uh, uh, and uh, some groups uh, decided to continue working as foreign agents, meaning that they have to label any publications um, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, they spread in media or in, in the internet, uh, labeling that they are acting as foreign agents, meaning, and this is also uh, 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 an important issue that uh, uh, a term uh, foreign agent is equal equals to a spy in the Russian language. Um, <clears throat> so what happened uh, lately uh, since uh, the beginning of this year, um, uh, uh, the Russian government decided to um, spread this label uh, uh, to media, to the journalists. And this was something new that happened. Um, uh, and a new list of foreign agents, media foreign agents, uh, came up. Um, um, and now uh, there are almost 50 journalists and media, media organizations in it. Um, uh, which is, to a certain extent, uh, more sensitive for media uh, because they work with information, they publish information, and they have to, to label uh, that they are foreign agents in any publication they do. Um, so um, at the same time, there is another uh, law which, uh, which Maria mentioned, which is uh, the law of undesirable organizations. Um, uh, which are prohibited to any activity in Russia. And uh, the Russian government uses both of them, um, uh, uh, labeling and banning uh, certain groups, most of all uh, initially uh, like uh, foreign funds or international organizations that were giving money to uh, Russian NGOs. But later, they, uh, the authorities, uh, they started banning um, political opposition groups. Uh, for example, Open Russia organization uh, uh, founded by uh, Russian businessman uh, Mikhail Khodorkovsky has been um, considered as undesired organization. And uh, any activity, any uh, any support of this organization, the undesirable organization in Russia is now a crime. And there are, uh, and there are several criminal cases and some people are already in the detention center. They are, they've been arrested facing years uh, in, uh, in jail uh, for just, for example, making uh, uh, links to uh, the websites of uh, undesirable organizations or organizing a meeting or uh, any protest action uh, uh, on the streets uh, on behalf of this organization. Um, this year, a uh, few media, Russian media has been also considered as undesirable organization and they stopped any activity in Russia. Um, so we see this as a tool um, uh, of uh, a new wave of repressions before the Russian parliamentary elections that had been um, held uh, last weekend in Russia. Um, and the uh, Russian civil society is expecting uh, what will continue after the elections now. So it's kind of kind of a question mark for all of us uh, on the domestic level, what will uh, what will happen after the elections, uh, uh, but the expectations uh, in general are bad. Hmm. 
Um, Pavel, maybe you could uh, also mention something about the latest amendments to the foreign agents laws that were introduced in December. Uh, for example, you have to now report on your planned activities ahead of conducting them and if the authorities does not approve you have to to stop the programs in question, right? And uh, I've also heard that you have to report on all persons that are participating in your programs and that it's no longer only like financial support from abroad but also organized organizer organizatorial support and we don't really know what that could mean right um could you say something uh, about uh, uh, these things too and what kind of sure, consequences uh, do you sure, think that this was, will it, have it, it was a long it was a long discussion in the human rights community several years ago whether to continue work as foreign agents and continue getting uh, uh international support uh, for example and fulfill all the requirements that the law poses on uh, on, on the foreign agents or uh to uh, 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 to try to exclude to be excluded from the list and to try to find um, legal ways uh, to continue uh, operating uh, without being uh, uh, a foreign agent. Um, it was a long discussion um, uh, um, and uh, several uh, groups decided to continue working as foreign agents uh, because these obligations um, sounded um, well, uh, uh, that they can be uh, reached. But the problem is that the government uh, is putting more, more and more uh, obligations and more requirements and more uh, restrictions uh, on the foreign agents. And this uh, uh, is exactly what you're uh, uh, just talking about because, <clears throat> uh, because uh, now uh, these uh, uh, foreign agents have to um, have to uh, agree and inform the government about any planning activity. So not only what has been already done, but what uh, what uh, what is to be done in the coming future. And asking, uh, well, literally asking for permission. Uh, to publish a book, to make a research, to organize a meeting, a conference, to uh, uh, to do anything. It's uh, it, it sounds like a total control uh, over uh, non-governmental activity uh, uh, in Russia for certain groups, as well as <clears throat> uh, the widening uh, understanding on uh, on uh, what can be. Uh, considered as support, not only money or funds coming from international groups like, by the way, uh, the United Nations organizations or the uh, European Union structures or Council of Europe or, uh, or any charities uh, uh, that are working uh, internationally. Uh, the, uh, uh, this, uh, as this international support uh, now uh, can be considered any any advice, even consultation, even for example, uh, you Maria uh, uh, will help um, uh, any Russian group uh, with uh, 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 with any information about Sweden or about Swedish uh, civil society or about Swedish government or businesses operating uh, in Sweden or, or and or in Russia. And this can be considered as support from a foreigner and we can be found uh, or enlisted as foreign agents as well. So uh, uh, the, the target uh, uh, and the focus uh, that the government government uh, is trying to reach is uh, to cut any uh, ties uh, uh, with the foreign peers and with the uh, international community that Russian civil society now has. Mm. Um, can you also maybe mention something about what the consequences are for the people who, for example, are found to be uh, um, associated with uh, the undesirable organizations in Russia. As I said, this is already a crime. Mm -hmm. 
and this can be persecuted <clears throat> by the police. Um, and there are already there are already uh, a bunch of uh, people who uh, uh, who has been fined um, administratively, and a few of them criminally persecuted. Uh, I know uh, two. Uh, I mean, personally, know two people that uh, that spent several months uh, in custody, uh, and one of them, Andrei Pivovarov, who is the head of Open Russia organization uh, in Russia. <clears throat> uh, he is, uh, by the way, uh, today is his birthday. He is forty, um, uh, and uh, he is in custody since I, I think since May. Uh, so for already four months, uh, uh, facing uh, several years of imprisonment right now. So uh, this is and uh, and this is purely for uh, for uh, contacts and participation uh, in uh, in some uh, events that uh, are uh, completely legal in in any part of the world. Hmm. Um, as I mentioned before. The lawyers of Agora have defended uh, several of these uh, foreign agents and uh, the undesirable organizations. And we have also um, made a movie uh, here in Astgripen about some of these cases. And uh, there is this young woman, Daria Apakoncic, who is uh, an activist, artist, feminist, um, and uh, she became one of the first to be registered as an individual foreign agent's media. And uh, we thought that we would now show uh, a short clip from this video. And uh, after that, I thought that maybe you, Pavel, could comment um, what it's like to, what such legal processes are like, uh, if there is a chance to win such cases, and what possibilities for people like Daria and uh, Andrei Pivovarov, as you mentioned, other activists, what chances do they have to, to reach justice through court system in, in Russia now? But let's show this clip. At the end of December, I was added to the list of foreign agents, which means that now uh, I have to see all posts, all materials, all pictures in all social medias. Uh, that uh, I'm foreign agent. Another thing that now four times a year I must write a big report to the Minister of Justice about all my money, how do I get it, and also how do I spend it. <laughs> uh, yes, and it's quite a big uh, document, about 85 pages. and. That's a lot of work, I can say. What if I don't want to do that? So first it is kind of fine that I must pay. And the worst thing that um, it could be like two years of prison if I'm not going to do that. Yes, um, Pavel. Uh... If you could please uh, comment, what possibilities do you think, do you see that there are for, for people like Daria to, to get justice nowadays? Well, first of all, um, I have to say that Daria is among five first uh, uh, individuals that have been considered foreign agents. Um, uh, before uh, the new year, uh, it was in late December last year, uh, when five people have been um, enlisted uh, as foreign agents in Russia, three of them are the journalists. Um, uh, uh, one is a human rights activist, Lev uh, Panamarov, uh, a human rights defender, uh, more than 80 years old, by the way. Now, uh, and uh, a feminist activist, uh, Darya Abakoncic, uh, whom you just seen. Um, and this is the first time when uh, Russian citizens have been considered foreign agents, not uh, non-governmental organizations or any other legal entities. <clears throat> but the first uh, court cases uh, on behalf of foreign agents 
or I started in uh, 2012. Uh, during this almost 10 years, more than 100 uh, uh, Russian non-governmental organizations went through the national court system uh, uh, challenging this status. No one of them has won, no one of them. Uh, it's like a pure victory uh, of the government in the Russian courts. Um, and all of them ended up in the European Court of Human Rights. In 2018 or 19, uh, the court communicated the first group of um, applications. Uh, and so far, we don't have a judgment. Uh, it's a uh, widely known saying about the European Court of Human Rights that justice delayed is justice denied. And this is exactly the case where it, uh, it is absolute, absolutely true. Um, because um, as you probably know that Hungary adopted the similar law uh, uh, very, a, a, almost a copy of a Russian law on foreign agents uh, after, the Rus uh, after Russia uh, has done that. And uh, Hungarian human rights organizations, uh, they appealed uh, to the court of uh, the European Union and already won the case. So the court of the European Union said this is a violation of basic uh, rights and freedoms. Uh, the European Court of Human Rights is, the case is still pending there, so we don't have the standard. We are absolutely sure that we will win the case, uh, but the problem is that uh, the situation is getting worse and worse every year since then. Uh, so all the foreign agents, including Daria, they challenged this status. Uh, she had to leave the country and she's not anymore in Russia because she was afraid of any attacks and persecutions uh, uh, that could happen. Uh, but we represent her in the courts. Uh, we, uh, we are going the whole uh, way to the Russian Supreme Court, and I am absolutely sure that we will go then to the Strasbourg Court as well. Uh, but uh, now there is zero chances to win uh, such a case uh, in Russia. And so far, since, uh, I mean, in almost a decade that we cannot win even in the European perfume. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that things are becoming worse for every year now. And uh, I suppose when we are talking about uh, these laws and how they are being used, they are also must, they are part of a bigger pattern that we can see, uh, which I mentioned already with the increased repression in, in Russia in general. And uh, it's pretty dark and grim and sad picture that we are seeing developing before our eyes right now. And uh, I was wondering if you could also comment on, on the prospects for, for the democracy movement in, in Russia after such a year. Um, if you think it will continue to, be, to become worse. And uh, also, I, I read an article in in the New Times uh, that you wrote recently, and you write that this like blatant injustice uh, has become mainstream in Russia, and that there are no longer any means of fighting it. Um, I was wondering if you could comment on that. Um, is it is it a hope such a hopeless situation right now, or is it something? that could change this negative trend that this path that that we see that Russia has taken and is there anything that you can see that that gives hope uh well no hope for several years already in Russia unfortunately uh, uh, this is not something that happened uh, just happened uh, like uh, last Sunday or uh, or last summer or whatever um, we, uh, I mean, this is our reality for years right now. Uh, and 
uh, no uh, expectations that anything will improve in coming future. Uh, in addition to what you've just said, I uh, have to notice that legal means are not working, almost not working anymore, because we are lawyers. Uh, and uh, for many years, uh, uh, we've been uh, helping people to uh, sometimes to win, uh, but, uh, but uh, more often to diminish the harm uh, uh, caused uh, by uh, law enforcement and, and Russian uh, judiciary. Um, <clears throat> uh, but what we also see as lawyers that uh, the effectiveness uh, of uh, um, legal means are uh, weakening and decreasing uh, 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 every year. Um, and uh, the, um, uh, the, the main task for um, uh, civil society groups in Russia now uh, is to survive uh, and to, uh, uh, to try to keep uh, t uh, their teams, people, activities, reputation, etc. Uh, as I said, uh, we all expect what the government policy, domestic policy, will be in coming months uh, after the new parliament is set uh, and uh, uh, before the new presidential elections in uh, 2024. Um, uh, but we have, uh, you know, all uh, major uh, political opposition leaders uh, are either uh, imprisoned or um, in exile. Um, uh, we have um, uh, hundreds of uh, politically motivated criminal cases against uh, uh, political and civic activists in Russia since the beginning of this year. Um, and uh, um, uh, it looks like uh, there are no any international um, uh, international um, uh, means or pressure that can uh, stop the Russian government from uh, uh, from you know making a U-turn from this path that you are talking about. Uh, so um, I, I uh, my expectations are bad. bad. Uh, but we will try to uh, to uh, you know uh, keep us um, uh, working uh, and try to uh, uh, help people as long as we can. Um, Pavel, as a last uh, question, you mentioned the international pressure and the international contacts. Um, I was wondering what are the possibilities still of cooperating with the Russian civil society today? If there are Swedish civil society representatives watching, wanting to cooperate with Russian civil society in some way, what would, you, what would your recommendations be to, to them, to us? What could and should we do, in your opinion? Well, the thing is that we are neighboring countries, right? Uh, and you're uh, sitting close to us and watching what is going on here. Uh, uh, you have to be, uh, you know, cautious about uh, about the events going on in Russia uh, because there we are too close to you, uh, and we are definitely influencing. And there is also Belarus, for example, uh, uh, we, uh, uh, where the situation is worsening. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, there is also Ukraine and Russian-Ukrainian relations close to, uh, to you. There are also Baltic states and, uh, uh, and uh, Russian relations with them, uh, which are not good for years right now. So in general, um, um, uh, 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 there are no signs that situation will improve in coming future, and you have to be um, uh, ready for that and prepared for that. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, and you know, uh, Sorry, keep an eye Pavel, on there's just one on minute Earth. left for the, for the seminar now, so I don't know if you want to be say something really short. Yes, so uh, so Sorry. the support, the contacts, uh, and uh, please keep an eye on what is going on here uh, uh, because we are, you know, too close to you. Mm. Um, sorry, this was a really short uh, webinar. And